Welcome to the Camp Channel. This is Xu Hang. Self discharge is the voltage drop experienced by the electrochemical energy storage devices at the charge state. Often, self discharge rates are higher in supercapacitors than in batteries, making the self discharge an important consideration for supercapacitors. A high self discharge rate results in a significant and rapid voltage drop after charging leading to lower available energy and power. In this video, I will talk about the causes of self-discharge in supercapacitors. Self-discharge occurs because a high potential is held on the two electrodes in the charged state, and this high energy state will naturally relax to the low energy and uncharged state. There are three types of mechanism that lead to self-discharge. Ohmic leakage parasitic ferroidic reactions, and charge redistribution. The ohmic leakage arises from the resistive pathways between the positive and the negative electrodes, and the voltage drop can be described by the following equation. Here, V0 is the initial voltage, P is delay time, and RC is the time constant on behalf of the resistance. The self-discharge rate depends on the resistance of the ohmic leakage and the capacitance of electrical capacitors and results in a linear profile when plotted as logarithm of potential versus time. Ohmic leakage is the least discussed among the three types since it is related to the configuration of a cell. Next is the parasitic Faradayic reactions. Parasitic Faradayic reactions evolve redox reactions of species in solutions or on the electrode surface, which is thermodynamically favorable at the charge state. Electrons are exchanged between electrode and the redox active species and thereby discharged electrode. Depends on the re-limiting steps of the parasitic Faradayic reaction, it can be divided into activation control and diffusion control processes. The types of rate limiting processes depend on the concentration of the reacting species. Self discharge reactions, which are limited by diffusion, exhibit a linear drop in potential when plotted versus the square roots of self discharge time, following this equation. In this equation, Vi represents initial voltage, Z charge, F Faraday constant, A surface area, D diffusion coefficient, C0, initial concentration, and T, the time. When the reaction species is at high concentration or is attached on the electrode, the Faradayic reaction is no longer limited by the diffusion rate and become activation control Faradayic reaction. The voltage decay caused by the activation control Faradayic reaction can be described by this equation. In this equation, R is the gas constant, T is temperature, alpha is transfer coefficient, F Friday constant, I0 is exchange current density, C is the interfacial capacitance, and finally Tau is the integration constant. Based on this equation, a plot of self-discharge potential versus the natural logarithm of time should exhibit a linear drop after a plateau. Another main cause of self-discharge is the charge rate distribution due to the inequality of the charge. Within the porous electrode and some pseudocapacitive material, for example, ruthenium oxide, the surface of the electrode charges more rapidly than the bulk. As a result, the surface reaches the desired charging potential before the bulk of the material. When charging stops, charges will move through the bulk of the material to reach the equilibrium. Since the electrode potential is measured at the outer base of the electrode, as the charge moves deeper into the material, the measured voltage drops. This charge distribution process is complex and is highly dependent on the pole structure and ionic electronic resistance of the electrode. Taking all these factors into consideration, the self discharge process in a real supercapacitor system is often very complicated, combining multiple simultaneous self discharge reactions including ohmic leakage, diffusion control Faradayic reactions, activation control Faradayic reactions, and charge redistributions. 
So polluting self-discharge profile in a different ways may be helpful to identify different processes. Self-discharge measurements can be conducted as either open circle potential or as a float current measurement. And the evaluated system can either be half cell with working counter and reference electrode to separate the potential drop caused by negative and positive electrode or a full cell to understand a practical situation. In all cases, the system is first charged to the desired potential for half cell or voltage for full cell. For open circle measurement, the system is placed on an open circle configuration after charging and the potential is recorded over time. In flow current measurement, after the desired charging potential is reached, a small current, also called the float current, is fed into the system to maintain the constant voltage and the flow current is recorded as function of time. In these two ways, we are able to measure the self-discharge processes experimentally and judge whether the self-discharge is very severe or not in the supercapacitor. We maintain this channel only on the weekends. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. The video in our ECAM channel are only for educational purposes and knowledge sharing. Please subscribe, share, and like our videos to support our channel. Thank you for watching the video today. See you next time.